Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week we'll talk about how to go ahead and create a hatch pattern that will define a wall as a one hour, two hour, or a smoke. There's a couple steps involved, so what we're going to do is run through them right now. Number one is we'll be using filters to pick up the wall information and then color code it appropriately. So the first first part of this video we'll go through and actually uh, show how that works. If I grab this wall here, you'll notice it's just a standard wall, and I opened up the the actual base Revit file here, so it doesn't have any really wall types, etc. It's a real clean file. Um, I grab this guy here. First thing I'm going to do is edit type, and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to call this wall. Uh, this will be wall two hour. We'll hit OK, and I'll take the original one, which is wall one. We'll rename that to wall one hour. Again, just um, how you name them, it's up to you. Uh, once I've named the, them appropriately, I'll come down here and I'll also add in the fire rating uh, 1HR. Uh, this is important. Uppercase and lowercase is important. So we want to make sure that you set a standard early on. I'm going to hit OK on that. We'll go down here and we'll hit uh, 2 hour and we'll scroll down and set this to 2 hour. So we've created two walls and we've uh, defined a parameter in here called, oops, excuse me, fire rating that we will tell Revit to look at. It will look at it and then um, note it. Let me verify we got those both right. Got this two hour, edit type, scroll down. I'm moving, try to move kind of fast so you're not looking at me clicking so much. So there is our two hour. Let's take this guy and he is our one hour. So we've got these two wall types and uh, we want to color code them appropriately. And we want to let Revit actually color code them um, and so we don't have to worry about using hatch patterns, etc. And that's when the real power of the database comes in. We can tell Revit to quantify things uh, or actually color code things based on certain uh, qualifiers or uh, criteria. So let's go ahead and take a look. If I type in VV right now, this is our um, visibility or graphic overrides. Or if you're from AutoCAD, it's the layer dialog box. Now, when I hit the filters here, you'll notice in the filters there are no filters available. What a filter does, it quanti uh, actually will look at all certain elements and then separate them out based on criteria. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one. See it says editor new. I'm going to create a new one here and this is going to be again one hour. And I could uh, put more of a uh, descriptor in there but there we go. I'm going to tell Revit to go find all of the walls that have a fire rating that is equal to less than, greater than, does does not contain, contains, etc. But I'm going to use the equals and I can drop it down contain a one hour. So, and you can have different wall types that actually will contain one hour and it will color code them appropriately. So I hit OK on that. Now I'll do that again and I'll create a two hour. Hit OK on that. We'll say go find all the walls and this, the thing we're doing here can be done for just about anything in Revit. We're just telling Revit to go find all the certain categories that contain certain information and Revit actually groups them together and then we can color code them appropriately. So it's, a, it's an extremely powerful feature. If you've come from AutoCAD, you're new to Revit. In AutoCAD you'd create new layers depending on your needs. You might create a layer called one hour, a layer called two hour. You'd put the line work on those layers and it would be color coded appropriately. Um, that works great in AutoCAD. In Revit we use the database to do this and what, what it does is two things. It gives us the ability, an ability to subsort categories like walls. It also gives us the ability to color code those subsorts. So let's go ahead and add it now. Hit add. I'm going to say add one hour. Hit OK. And I'll say add two hour. Now just for simplicity here I'm going to go to my patterns and I'm going to say take a color and let's say one hour let's make it red okay and then I'll say a pattern in here there's not a lot in here and that's fine I'll show you how to load one uh, in a moment now I'm going to use uh, the red whoop, let's go ahead back to that moving too fast uh, red solid hit okay and then two hour will be blue solid again you choose the colors you choose the patterns and we'll uh, make this fancier later now let's use this one, let's use the vertical, and we'll talk about that. Okay, so we have these two, and we hit OK. Now, we're going to go ahead and verify that everything should be working right. In theory, uh, these walls should have actually color coded. Let's go here and set this to, let's say, medium or fine. Try that again, VV. Okay, so we have filters. Uh, um, what it's saying here is, ah, 
you may have picked this up. If you did, good. Um, I do a lot of work with MEP, so I'm always dealing with surfaces um, of duct, etc. So I had a tendency to go here, but if you think about this, those walls are actually, um, let's say, eight feet tall and we're cutting through them. So it's not color coding them because we're not cutting them. Okay, so that's one of the things you might run into. So I could do two things here. I'm going to hit OK. If I take this wall, let's verify our view range. Currently the view range is cutting at four foot. So if I put these walls at two foot high, what's going to happen is, let's go uh, grab the walls again. Level one, unconnected, two foot. Notice now they're being color coded. Uh, the scale here, let's put it a little larger and see if we're picking up. So it's picking this one up, it's not picking this one up. Let's see if that's a two hour wall. Edit type, scroll on down, fire rating two hour. Okay, but you'll see one of them showing up here. So let's go through and fix it, since I did kind of make a mess. I'm gonna undo this, undo this, because in real life you'll be cutting through the walls if you're an architect. So let's go back, BB. I'll go back to filters, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually clear these out. At this point, I'll say, uh, put that back to no override. And no override. Grab this guy again. Cancel out of that. Click this one and hit clear overrides. Now I'll go back and put them back over here. One hour. When I cut through a one hour, that's cut patterns. There we go. We'll pick a color. One hour will be, I think it was originally it was red. And then we go to the pattern and I'll do solid. We hit OK. On the blue, we'll go blue and we'll go again solid. Let's try that out. Hit OK. And again this wall is not color coding. Something's not right. Let's verify. Come down here. OK. Fire rating 2 hour. OK. Let's check our filters. VV. Filters. Editor new. 2 hour. Ah. If 2 hour, that's not right. So if it's a 2 hour one, we say go down here go find all of the walls that the fire rating equals two hour. Okay, moving too fast, got myself in trouble, hit OK, hit OK, and now they're color coding appropriately. So that's how we can use these filters um, to apply them to different views. Now you may say, well what if I got multiple views, I've got level two, level three, level four. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this view, duplicate, and I'm just gonna duplicate it. Um, and now this one's running the same filter. Okay. Now what about ceiling plans? I click ceiling and notice it's not color coding appropriately. Um, this may not be the best example, but let's go back to this one and let's say it was a different level or a different view. I can type in VV and you'll notice in here the filters are actually running because I duplicated the view. I'm going to go ahead and remove these two filters. One of the tricks you can do is you can take the filters from one view and create what's called a view template. These are very powerful. So we could set this up in the office and whenever I wanted to color code my walls by fire rating, I could just apply that view template. What that's going to do is it's going to pretty much take care of all the steps that we just did. Let's take a look. I right click, create a view template, give it a name. We'll say this is uh, fire ratings, color code. Okay, hit OK on that. Now, I'm going to tell Revit, don't remember the scale, don't remember this, don't remember that. I am going to uncheck every box except my filters. So this is a very defined filter. So what this will do is if you're doing any, pretty much any plan view, it's not going to mess up um, the, the categories that are turned on and off. It's not going to mess up anything. All it's going to do is apply the filters. Let's test drive it. I'm going to go to uh, ceiling plan, right? I'm going to go to view range and I want you to notice it says 7, 6 and all that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to apply a template property. Now by doing this you see it says fire rating. When I hit OK on that see how it applied it. It didn't mess up the scale, the view range, any of that but it just applied that one filter. So that is how we can use filters in Revit to really um, automate some processes. This can be used for color coding duct for let's say high velocity versus low velocity versus supply, you know, ex whatever you want to do. You, you, can, you, can, you can imagine what we can do there. So uh, lots of good stuff. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that tip. Uh, if you want to find out more about our company, the company's name is CAD Tech Seminars. Uh, if you want to find us on the web, therevitguys.com or thebimguys.com. We do consulting, 
training and support for Revit and AutoCAD.